Hello everyone in Gran Turismo 7 after a <clears throat> lengthy break from driving at all. I was on some holiday and even a longer break from Gran Turismo. It is definitely time to pick up where I finished last time. So let's see what it was. Uh, I have quite a few red spots here. Uh, one escapes a red mark there. <clears throat> I don't even know what it uh, just means. There's a new one for Watkins Glen. I just click it to get rid of the red mark. The next one is missions uh, of I'll do them definitely, but I want to see if if the cafe menu books will take me here or if I have to go there myself. Brand Central. I don't know what I want from me in the Brand Central. Probably show me some new cars. Let's have a look, a quick one. Suzuki, uh, another vision car. Why right didn't clear? Is there something more? They wanted to clear. They won't be buying it, here we go, it cleared. And there is uh, the final red mark. In this case, it is the cafe. So let's have a quick look. Menu books, and that's menu book number 21, Championship Asian Oceania. So what do we have here? Learn more quickly. Look out for this menu. I would like you to go to the world circuits and enter the Asia Oceania Championship. We'll be racing on track in Japan and on Australia's world famous Mount Panorama Circuit. Your goal is to finish in the top three. Good luck out there. We're behind you all the time. Yeah, let's not lie to ourselves. Our goal is to finish first. Who cares about second or third, right? We need to be. Okay, so let's start it. A uh, short introduction to the new championship. That, uh, that is RX7, right? That's Skyline uh, 34. Well, that Mazda is so much uh, nicer. The Toyota Supra. I still think the Mazda looks the best. Then Supra, then Skyline. NSX looks great. That's a really nice introduction. Really nice one. Well done, well done, Rex. Well done for this one. They're not done. It continues. Not sure if I could interrupt it, but I didn't want to. Oh, it was too good to interrupt it, right? Okay, so world circuits. Uh, world circuits. So this is the championship they're talking about, Asia, Oceania. What do we have here? Um, has to be a road car, has to be a Japan, Korean car, and has I need national A license, which I have. So everything is there. There is a Tokyo Expressway, the truck, which I hate, a Fuji International Speedway, amazing race truck, and of course, Mount Panorama. Hardly to beat that. Um, hardly anything beats that. Maybe Spa. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not sure what's the requirement when it comes to the PP for the trucks. And the camera actually covers that. So I will quickly remove the camera. It's 600. So PP is 600. Um, and it has to be Japanese car with the PP of 600. The twin turbo is pretty much ready, but I did all previous episode in the GTO Twin Turbo, so I don't really want to use it again. What's that Honda? Uh, it doesn't tell me. It's 471, but I drove that Honda a lot. I think that 32 may be a good choice. Not sure if I have Mazda. 
RX7, that would be a perfect choice. Sylvia would be a nice choice as well. That's a nice car. But I'll go with 32. So I need to tune it to 600 because at the moment that car is at 500 for what I can see. So let's go to tuning shop. Let's see what we can do. So extreme. I don't think there's anything in extreme I want to install. Um, I want sports. I got sports hard. What's the difference between? Mm -hmm. Three mediums. That seems to be a. Uh, I've been even out choice between hard and soft, right? So let's go mediums. Let's go to the racing one and brakes. We definitely want brakes for that car. Uh, so let's go with the softer disc or the drill one. I think they will look better for that car. Go. Um, what else do we want? We want to reduce weight. So the first reduction, here we go. Second reduction, maybe the third one as well. Why not? Two? So we already did 555 out of 600 we need. What else we can get in the racing, which is not too expensive. Racing L filter, a good choice. I'll have the brakes, racing brake pads. Yes, definitely. Let's get that. <clears throat> racing exhaust, exhaust manifold, yeah, good choice. Brake balance controller. That's quality of life more than the uh, PP upgrade. Uh, I don't want to spend too much on the rest of the upgrades. Racing intercooler, yeah, that's definitely something I can get. Let's go to semi racing, see what we can get to further improve that car. Um, yeah, semi racing clutch and flywheel. Flywheel, sorry. Here we go. Uh, high adjustable sport suspension. 6000, that's not too expensive. Sports intercooler would be a downgrade because I've got the racing intercooler. Those are a bit too expensive. Maybe the computer, why not too? Semi racing silencer, that's another upgrade, 8,000. I'll just spend quite a lot on that car. What else do we have? Power restrictors, uh, that's quite another quality of life. So let's get it, that's super cheap. Close ratio transmission and close ratio transmission low and high. So, uh, two way LSD, actually I would prefer one way LSD, but that's downgrade because I already got, I think, one sports clutch and flywheel. I think I already got the racing one. I have a brake pads, uh, I mean, kit. I have better suspension. That's an upgrade and not too expensive. We already owed 590. That's another quality of life improvement. So let's get it. It's bore up at 6,000 and it's getting us close to 600 now. And <clears throat> I think I will stop here. Yeah, I think I'll stop here at 594. We'll see if that's enough. The car is in excellent condition and it's ready to be used in the in the Asia Oceania Championship. So let's go there, let's try it, let's try to win it. So I'm just going to check that car has a manual H shifter, eight stick, so that will be that's what I'm going to use. I
put that shifter apart, I clean it because I had a lot of problems with that. I didn't want to set it back to Fanatec even though it's on warranty. I found that it's better to do it your, uh, yourself, so that's what I did. I tested it yesterday and I didn't have any problems, so hopefully it's all good. We will find out soon. Need the gloves on. Okay, uh, we have three guys to listen to, so let's uh, go with that. You can't go wrong with a custom wing. I got my Z car tuned at the Japanese tuner, Amuse, pretty sweet, don't you think? So I actually put a wing on that car because that was a requirement from one of the previous books. When you are fitting racing tires to a retail car, it's important to adjust the suspension accordingly. If the natural frequency is 3 Hz or higher, then the tires will start to lose their grip. Make the front suspension stiff and the rear suspension a little softer. That's the general idea. Good. The way this Supra combines the roar of a straight 6, high rigidity and quick handling, it will have you smiling all the way to the finishing line. This truck has some high speed sections, so I suggest fitting a custom wing. The wing will create downforce, which which help keep, which will help keep the car stable. The Tokyo Expressway was built on the side of an old river. Did you know that? I didn't. I used to watch car racing for hours on end. Even after the races were over, I would watch the replays over and over again. Watching other drivers replace is a good way of improving your own driving. If you have a lot of time on your hands, then definitely it is. Okay, a quick settings. First of all, assistance settings. So we have manual gearbox, traction control at zero, ABS off. That car is old, uh, so I'm assuming no ABS. It would be a bit finer as well to, to drive without ABS. Car settings, uh, sports medium as I wanted. I won't be doing any tuning of that car. So let's try and race. I will start the third gear, I think that would be a good one to start with. It's on the second, but it should accelerate to the third. There we go, third gear was a good choice. Just enough space there. A quick reduction to third and a better exit. Four of gear. Fifth. And then heavy braking, I guess. Hill and toe, I'm not sure if that's really not needed in Gran Turismo. But it's just fun to do it anyway, and doing it in any game is a good practice for those games which really need it. Like Project Cars 2, for example. Ah, oh, that was just enough space there. Closing the inside. And here we go. P10. Not sure which position I was starting from. Uh, it was quite dark. That was nice. That's a nice effect. Where we are blinded for a moment when we get into the tunnel. I knew he would be all over the place. That's why I slowed down and didn't risk overtaking him. That's lack of traction control, even though it's a four-wheel drive car with quite a big wing. It has enough power to power slide quite nicely out of the slow corners. Oh. I could have avoided that, but it was a very small one, barely a touch. 
few scratches on the right hand side, nothing big. Quite a busy there in front, heavy traffic. Uh, let's get some slipstream. That's a bar is quick here. And he's driving in the middle. Okay, he left, he's leaving some space on the left hand side. But I feel like I lost too much time behind him. Uh, Mazda RX-7, local engine, rotary, usually a beautiful sounding engine, P3, chasing uh, what looks like an SX from that distance. And I'm not really sure, ah, there's a new Supra in front, I, bet, I believe. I really thought there is enough space there, that's, that's the thing of not knowing the truck. <laughs> Too wide in the left hander. And I have no idea what's there in the first place, so I don't recognize that car. Oh, is that Subaru? Or Mitsubishi? It was Subaru Impreza, WRX. Final lap, and I'm on P1. So far, so good. Uh, it looks like cleaning that gearbox uh, worked. Oh, the shifter, not the gearbox. It actually works well and I don't have any issues with it. At least for now. Let's see how long it does it last. Uh, I do have a plenty of spirit I bought, so... I can clean it whenever it is needed, required. And I think that's the finish line, it is, checkered flag, and we are done. That wasn't too hard. Um, <clears throat> and that NSX actually was following through and overtook that Impreza. Time to move. Uh, yes, obviously, you can tell I'm a Corvette fan. Uh, that's a Corvette.
and I think that's Corvette Helmet as well. Um, I didn't make them, I downloaded them. Um, okay, so that's P1. Price money plus 50%, so that race was clean enough, which is good. I had uh, one touch, I think, with the, with the wall, but it wasn't too big. And it's time to move to race number two. Uh, to the next race, let's just please. That's uh, that's Fuji. Fuji is a nice truck. And finally, we're moving to a real race world uh, truck rather than driving on some fantasy uh, highways in Japan. I'm glad that the Mount Panorama is the last one because that's my favorite from those three. Uh, we have three more guys to listen to. Mikhail Hizal and I are perhaps the two major Subaru fans racing in this competition. He's a driver I really respect. Okay, that wasn't much. I just got back from having my car tuned. Good. Looks like Leclerc a little bit. I know it's not. I first learned about tuning from movies and anime. Probably Initial D. There's nothing quite like driving a car you've customized just the way you like it. It's so much fun. And Fraga? The Fuji Speedway is used for the International B License Test, for which I'm the instructor. Have you tried it? No, not yet. The Lexus RCF you drive in the test is actually my car. It's fun to drive, isn't it? First of all, it's a really beautiful car. Okay, so we're not changing anything, uh, the same settings, so let's start. Third gear, that, sounds, uh, that seems like be, like to be a good uh, starting gear for that particular car. I was breaking too early, but obviously I need to learn that breaking point, I have three laps for that. Again, I was breaking too early. Normally, I would start breaking somewhere here. But without ABS, I need to take some adjustments. If I lock the wheels, I'm lengthening that braking distance considerably. so I can actually see who's next to me, if anyone. I didn't have to do it, but I wanted to do it. I was breaking a bit too late. I think it would be a good uh, breaking point with the ABS, but without it. Lock the wheels, just in the last phase of the braking. I 
That was one of the talking heads in that Mazda. He was there on the right hand side. Uh, I left him enough space, didn't want to push him or anything like that. Subaru in front, Subaru behind, that's the new Supra. Let's stay behind to get some slipstream. I need to stop braking earlier now than the last time. I started braking a bit later than that guy in the Supra. And that's uh, Impreza again. I'm feeling like that 600 pp is too much for my car. Oh, okay, he went just in front, in the braking. A bit too much power there. I had to quickly adjust that accelerator press. That's a final lap. I actually thought that's lap two, so it wasn't actually that super easy. It took me all three laps to get to the P1. So maybe that PP is actually accurate. <laughs> that was uh, race two. Uh, a real world race track and it went much more smoother than on the fantasy track just because i know them so much better those real tracks and mount panorama so we're going all the way to australia star roulette ticket those roulette tickets are useless um okay so to the next race One of my favorite race trucks, and who doesn't like it really? Okay, three more talking heads. Japan's uh, Takuma Miyazano and I are maybe the two biggest Subaru fans in the competition. I hope to one day race as his teammate. Okay, after this race, I intend to return to Brazil for a bit and play it Automobilista too. Simons, I'm originally from Melbourne, Australia. It's an exciting city, very multicultural. I love it. Even if the winters are bloody freezing, Mount Panorama is an Australian truck and we're all very proud of it. Kangaroos have been known to hop onto the truck from time to time, so be sure to keep an eye out. Mount Panorama. Third gear, P16. To get to the first one, need to overtake all of them. I have three laps for that. Here. 
Supra, uh, sorry, uh, Toyota Supra. Let's find some, find a gap somewhere here, here we go, there was enough space. So what do we have here, Hyundai and, was it Infiniti? That's very technical section of the race truck. Easy to make a mistake here on braking, especially without ABS. It can send you flying if you lock the wheel. It can spin the car. Oh, that was a bit too fast in that corner. So it's P10, a very long down a hill, straight, 260 miles per hour, and now we have to start braking to that left-hander, which probably will be second gear corner. Yeah, that's what it was. Let's grab the FP9, just enough space there, a little bit on the grass. Acceleration there. Oh, he didn't leave me a lot of space. I had to go on the grass a little bit with my left wheels. That was just enough, barely. Oh, NSX uh, on P4 this time. already behind on the radar, so it means I can close the door if needed. That wobbly head camera on the truck works so well. That, uh, that is such an improvement to the previous previous game from the series, of, actually to all of the games of the series. Uh, the series, countries, Turismo, never had a wobbly, wobbly head camera and it works really, really well. Though I can imagine it can make some people feel sick. Especially on a race track like that, when there's a lot of elevation change. That's where the camera works best, going uphill, downhill, sudden elevation change, sudden turns, while changing the elevation. Yeah, really, really good. This time, the surprise, really pushing it hard. Went aggressive there on that curb, on the left curb, went through it. Current score and P1 on the end of lap 2, and we're starting lap 3. Actually, getting darker. We have uh, accelerated time here on the track. I guess we'll be finishing uh, in the full darkness. Yep, let's let her keep those uh, high beams. I don't think that wobbly camera would be good uh, for multiplayer. Um, I think it's great for single player for the extra experience and immersion, but in the multiplayer, online games, online races, I'm pretty sure that having a normal camera will allow to make better lap times. Actually, 
actually, oh, whoa, 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 that's a bit too wide. Driving from any other camera than cockpit will also allow for a better lap times. Maybe not the chase one, but definitely for uh, like bumper or something like that. Just because it gives a uh, better visibility of the race track. Cockpit camera restrict how much actually we can see. Actually dark that corner. Yeah, not switch off the lights. So it's cool, but the visibility is horrible. Help that I'm driving in the middle of the day and it's super sunny here in a heat wave as well in London on the Sunday afternoon which makes the visibility on the monitor a bit worse but that didn't stop me from winning that race that was the most fun on Man Panorama out of the three races Hopefully the winnings out of the three races, plus I think there will be overall championship prize covers all my spending for, uh, for tuning. Yeah, that definitely should cover everything. Uh, great, number one overall, number one on all three trucks. And I got, oh, I can win one of the three. I don't really care about uh, BMW. Let's go middle. I think that's actually a really good choice. <laughs> I was lucky here. That was definitely the best out of out of, out of the three. Oh, that looks cool. Okay, so we have access to a new mission. Maybe maybe the cafe menu book will send me there. So much clicking that game. Let's go back to the cafe. Let's have a quick look here. So first of all, let's check the car collection. That should be the BMW there. Here we go. M3 Sports Evolution. I like the color they showed uh, on the card better than this uh, red. But it is what it is. And let's collect that gift. One star, so that would be nothing special. And I have never ever got anything better than the shittest priced available. So let's see if this continues. I'll be getting that lowest pile of money as always. <laughs> it doesn't matter that much, actually. Uh, what's there in the missions? Uh, Rolling Stone is the new one, right? Which opened. Stunk. Drift mission. I'm really bad at drifting. Red. Beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> Let's forget about this. Let's go to back to the cafe menu. And in the cafe menu... Let's listen to Luca. Well done for winning the Asia Oceania Championship. I've got your reward all ready for you. Go ahead and take it. Thank you very much. And we can move to menu book number 22, collection BMW M3. So I'm just guessing that I already collected one by winning the championship. 
Did we listen to these three guys? Do they have anything interesting to say? Or the skyline? I think I already listened to them. So, menu book number 22, collection BMW M3. Yeah, as I thought, I already have one. So let's learn more. For this menu, I would like you to collect cars made by the Bavarian manufacturer BMW. Specifically, you will be collecting the M series of high performance sports cars. Come back to the cafe once you've collected all three cars and I'll give you your reward. Let's start. So, first of all, I'm not sure what car I need. Successfully compete in those. And the camera covers me, what's up there? Ah, oh, there's nothing, okay. So we have a Nürburgring. We have Dragon Trail, that's fantastic truck. That's obviously a real truck. Third place or higher, it's 550 PP. Uh, let's go with the fantasy truck first to get rid of it. Uh, PP, there's no limit, but the European FR challenge is 550, so expect that PP is 550. Has to be European car, pretty much front engine, rear wheel drive with 500 PP class. Let's see, that BMW would be perfect. I just need to tune it a little bit. So let's go with this one. Let's go back to the tuner. We need to add around 90 performance points to this car. Cleaning shop. Let's start with the tires. This time I'll go with sport softs. That put me, puts me at 505. Maybe I should go with sports mediums. Yeah, okay. Always mediums. Now, uh, that car is quite light. I just want more power with it. I want more, better braking, definitely. So let's... Racing brake parts. Let's go with this one. They're the same, actually, just they look differently. Description, they're the same. And better parts. That actually lowered my PP. That was interesting. So which parts are better? If those if those lowered my PP, any other? Oh, there are sports brake pads, and they actually improve. So that's strange. A sport brake pads. Double click. I'm sorry. <clears throat> sports brake pads actually increase my PP in comparison to racing brake pads. I'm not sure why. Racing oil filter, yes, definitely. Uh, racing silencer, that's quite expensive for that car. Um, clutch and flywheel, that's a very little gain for that price. Brake balance controller, that's quality of life improvement. Uh, racing exhaust manifold, yeah, that's cheap. Let's go with that. Okay, let's go to semi-racing, see what we have here. Mm -hmm. We could go with the transmission, but it's very expensive. Semi-racing clutch and flywheel. Racing clutch and flywheel. 5800, and that improvement of 1 PP, that's crazy. Suspension, that's always a good... That would reduce it, obviously. Yes, please, the computer. Silencer. I would have a filter, the racing one. Weight reduction, always good thing to do. Maybe stage as well. 
and that puts me at 549.46 out of 550 recommended which is a good starting point so let's go back to the world circuits and do some racing uh, as i said previously i'll be starting with the fantasy track first to get rid of it let's enter <coughs> That's going to be interesting. I'm expecting that car to be quite hard to drive. Oh, I need to click again. As I said, the game is very clicky. Okay, let's listen to Rubilar. The IB8 license test takes place at Dragon Trail Gra Gardens. My time on it's pretty good, even if I do say so myself. Oh. I'm very humble, aren't I? Uh, assistant, manual, everything off. That's an old car, everything off. So let's start, let's drive. So what I just learned, and that's what I predicted, it's sometimes not easy to keep that M3 on track. I released the clutch too early. And the gear didn't register. That way, it's such an ugly car. An ugly but a bond car. I think that it was one with one in one of the bond movies, right? Is it Golden Eye? Or was it the other one? Paint with one, in one of the Pierce Brosnan spoons. That that something I'm sure of. Third gear and can still slide. is one hell of an ugly spoiler there. Bloody hell, disgusting. B5 on lap 2. I think it's looking quite well for me. Another M4 with an ugly spoiler, what the hell? Are they from Essex or something? What I have, what I can tell about this BMW is that uh, it has a uh, driver friendly brakes so much harder to lock the wheels than in the skyline I was driving before that's definitely an imp quality of life improvement Accelerate, accelerate a little bit. I learned from my uh, previous lap where it went sliding here on the third gear. Mm -hmm. 
stop braking a little bit, but didn't hit the wall, so not too bad. Uh, chasing M3, some British driver in it. Very unstable on braking. One hell of a scary moment during the braking, I could have finished really bad. And a finish line. And a P1 in that challenge. Let's move to the next one. Uh... All money prices, nothing big, other than nothing, I guess. And that's the second of the M3s, just one more, the newest one. And now it's going to be a really interesting race truck. And I hope it's the full Norch life. It looks like it is. So there will be one lap. Oh no, it's not a burger ring. And it's it's fitting because here, when we go here, it shows us the Norge life map on the left hand side. But here it, uh, it tells it's just the Nürburgring, so I guess three laps, number laps two, just two laps, 12 cars, two laps. My, I guess my starting position is 12. So, third gear, third gear. And let's, oh no, let's listen to Rubilar first. I'm crazy about the history and sound of this compact 1989 E30 M3. It's a bit old, but I'm sure that with me behind the wheel, it will go straight to the top. I intend to make the most of its lightweight body and give it my very best. Me too. I think we're driving the same car then. So, let's see who's right. He's him or myself. Very similar cars, actually the same cars. He wants to get it all the way to the top, I want to get mine all the way to the top. Not sure if the first gear would be a better option here. I will go wider here on the entry, should get me a better line to the corner and I should be able to overtake both of them. The 
Is that BMW in front of me? Does it have blue blue wheels? Or rims actually, not the whole wheels, just the rims. It looks like it does. That is some proper village tuning, that spoiler and the those rims. But he will be blocked by the C8. Maybe not. Pretty wide in the corner. And that C8 pushed me to the left. What an asshole. Wow, this one's driving really slow here. Didn't expect it. How the hell he's so high on P4? Five. Well, now P6. But he wasn't P5. That's third gear. <laughs> so that's the guy who was uh, talking for the race. Rubilar, he's driving the same car as I am driving. He's doing quite well, currently at P3. I locked the wheels there a little bit. Oh no! I was uh, quite a big mistake. Could have finished really. The final lap won't be easy to overtake all of them, if possible at all. A better acceleration of the corner, so that should give me P3. Not sure if I can catch up and overtake those two guys in front. Maybe one of them, but not both. I have to retry it, I want to be first. P3 is enough, but it doesn't satisfy me. That definitely doesn't satisfy me. Uh, but at least I finish better than the other uh, E30. So I'm going to retry straight away. I got a car, that's not bad. Completed the book itself. Oh, come on, how many times I have to click? This is so stupid. And let's retry. That's, I think, is the only disadvantage. Well, no. There are a few disadvantages in that game, a few problems with this game, but one of the big ones is how force feedback 
does not properly inform you when the car is losing the grip on the acceleration. I think that's a big, big issue. The main purpose of force feedback is to provide information about the car behavior. racing driver we don't feel the car with our body as a real racing driver sitting in the car and the cars in Gran Turismo 7 they can suddenly snap out of under the driver under acceleration and it's really really hard to do anything with that when that happens He has a little better acceleration. But he got stuck behind it. That's what I'm talking about. That, that force feedback did not inform me about it in any way. I saw it with my eyes rather than feel it on the wheel. That is really, really bad. That makes the driving artificially harder, but it's not, this is not a good game design. Five seconds, oh, this shift, horrible, if I want to win it that shouldn't be happening. Okay, so Lopez's car has better acceleration. But he left a gap big enough there for me to take it. many mistakes to have a chance to win it. I could have won it if I drove it without any mistakes, so now I have to drive it again because I won't accept anything less than first. And I know it can be done in this car, so at least I will earn some credits.
off the wheels there a little bit. But I have inside here, so can overtake him. And this one as well. That was, this is a good start. Two cars overtook him uh, quite quickly and easily. I should overtake this one here in that corner. That's P9. Not bad. that BMW, the uh, black one with uh, blue rims, was parked, but the white one, that's good for me. That C8 started sliding there, and suddenly when more to the inside, straight at me, I should have enough space here on the inside, perfect. 9 seconds to the first one, P5, still on the first lap. Don't know what happened there, but that's the thing I was talking about previously, that game doesn't inform well enough about our rated slides for seatback doesn't do it. I definitely won't be losing time behind him. I have three more cars to catch. And six seconds. Cover. Five seconds or less. They kind of all close to each other. I'm, I went a bit too wide here. slow in that chicane, Schumacher's SS I think it's called. times the charm. That wasn't easy though. That BMW wasn't overly super fast on the race truck. It was quite hard to drive and uh, really hard to feel it on the, on the acceleration. It can snap so easily. 
anyway, it is a win. And some good prize money. Well, maybe not good, but for two laps in that old BMW. I'll take it. No replace needed, no, thank you very much. We can exit that. And I can go back to the cafe. Cafeteria. Uh, okay, let's go there. Let's see what they have here for me. Collection BMW M3 completed. Luca, congratulations. You've got all three cars. This completes your, completes your BMW M3 collection. Once you've collected your rewards, I've got some stories to tell you about these cars. Another roulette ticket. Free start this time. Uh, it'll be as shitty as always. Luca. Collection BMW M3. Menu book number. 22. BMW is a manufacturer that has seen great success in touring car races with cars based on retail models. At first, BMW's in-house sports division was in charge of the company's motorsport activities. But then in 1972, it set up a subsidiary company called BMW Motorsport. The new company's technical specialists develop engines for formula machines as well as touring cars. In 1993, its name was changed to BMW M, a name that is still in use. The BMW M series cars you see here are all retail models developed by BMW M. Even among the rest of BMW's retail lineup, they stand out as being really powerful and popular models. First generation BMW M3, which made its debut in 1985, was the base model for the company's touring car. Designed from the ground up as Toad thought it were a racing car, it remains a legend among M3s in Perfect. Collection Alfa Romeo. I want to listen to Chris as well. Hmm, a BMW M series car, the first generation M3s are best associated with Final model, the Sport Evolution is enormously popular. It is distinguished by its upgraded 2.5 litre engine and rear spoilers. First glance, this may seem like slight modifications, but those in the know will tell you otherwise. Ho oh, oh, ho, indeed, this is one main machine. Not too many of these cars were produced, so you can expect that their price will only go up. Agurazaka. That uh, E30 M3 Sport Evolution. Aren't you Hikonori Hagurazaka, the legendary car designer based in Europe? As a matter of fact, I am. Nice to meet you both. We're so honored to make your acquaintance. Hagurazaka san is a fantastic car designer originally from Japan who is now based in Italy. Work on many iconic cars that have left their mark on automotive history. The 1980s was truly the peak of boxy car design. Blister fenders were the results of an round tires to a square body design. They were a defining symbol of the times. While the geometric body of this car may be minimalistic, the, abstract for, the abstracted form still manages to execute an intense need for speed. Or maybe it's because of its shape that this quality really stands out. That was very insightful, thank you so much. Don't mention it, the pleasure was all mine. Well, see you around. Like that. <laughs> okay, menu books. And that's menu book number 23, collection Alfa Romeo. Three cars, a Mito 4 c 14 and 8C Competizione 08. Learn more. For this menu, I would like you to collect cars made by the Italian manufacturer Alfa Romeo. The highest performance variant of several Alfa Romeo models was given the name Quadrifoglio Verde. The name means green for leaf clover in Italian. The cars you need to collect, the 8C Competizione is the most powerful, be sure to admire this one in your garage. 
There's a reward for you if you can collect all three cars, so be sure to come back here once you're done. Okay, another mission to do. Let's go to garage quickly. I have two things to do there. One of them is to check the car collection. We have two new cars, right? German BMWs, uh, M303 and M307. That one looks bet definitely better. O3. Um, and we have one three star roulette ticket, roulette of despair. And the lowest price again. Uh, the streak continues, nothing changed. Uh, this is now 10,000 rather than 5. Um, yeah. So let's see what they prepared for us for the Alfa Romeo racing. So we have Brunswick, Alsac, and Sardinia. So we have two fantasy trucks and only one real world truck that's such a bs in that game um so what is it this is european club and cup 600 so 600p i can see some crazy cars there same for all of them it is the same for all of them but a lot of different to choose. driving this one but there is Sunday Cup 500, which hasn't been done yet. Those two are completed. There is G Cup Group 4. Okay. I'm curious why this one hasn't been done. I might go back to those which haven't. Definitely looks like something we. It probably was a reward car which they had that would or it was omitted they didn't have to do it because only the two out of three cars i may do a day where i go through all of this which uh, i haven't completed anyway uh let's focus on this one what do we need we need a road car and a european one and it needs 600 performance points 100 performance point. Definitely don't want the scores. But it's a barf. 500. I think one of those being W's. 538, so I need to tune it a little bit. Yeah, that's going to be the BMW. I'm not going to spend money for a new car. <sighs> And a short break, I'll be right back. Oh, actually, what's those two things up there? Bonus campaign, correctly predict the winner of the World Series of the Race, earn up billion in-game credits. What is it? What is it? I will look into that once I'm back. I need a short break.
Okay, so I'm back. <clears throat> and I need to tune that BMW before the next race. Let's start with tires as always. Uh, sports mediums. Interesting that the sports soft goes the same. They would put me at 568 and those would put me at 553. Actually, that may be a cheaper way to the 600 pp. So I'll go with the soft this time. Uh, weight reduction? No. Uh, brakes. I need good brakes. This time I'll go with this uh, brake parts. They, I think they're going to look better on that BMW. Okay. And the racing. I don't understand why it does. Anyway, I'm buying them. Um, okay. We are at 577. Uh, sport suspension, that's also a good purchase, and then some, and then some misclicks, so let's do some weight reductions, 605, and here we are, at 600, so I'm not going any further than that, but what I want to change, uh, I want to go to GT Auto, car customization, So we've got wheels. Actually, I think those wheels are really nice. Custom parts, front. What can we change here? It actually looks quite good. Doesn't make it too obvious. But I think it really, really accent the line with the car. That diffuser may be actually too, too much. I'm curious if it gives any performance. Uh, I don't think so. But that's that's too aggressive for the road car. I don't like it. How about the wings? So that's the standard part, and that looks really nice. Very subtle. Uh, this is horrible. This is quite good as well. Uh, let's put this one. Racing items. Yeah, I don't think I need them. Number plates, really? Caliper colors, oh, that's nice. But let's change the... Ah, oh, so that's the real... What? Why it's showing me Supra? Learn more. Clayton, this is where we sell paint for use in the livery editor. Okay, I see. Once you've bought some paint, it's yours to keep and you can use it as much as you like in the livery editor. Aside from simple primary colors, we have paints that will allow you to accentuate the textures and tones of your car. Cool. So what do I have in Liberator of all now? Crate design, yeah. I just want simple color, I just don't want it to be white. Yeah, body, all of it. Let's see if I can buy something nice actually. Close that. Uh, close. Let's go to paint colors and let's see what we have here. Yeah, there are some nice colors here, definitely. Why the hell there's so many of them? I wanted green. I think green works better with Lamborghini. But I think that BMW is going to look good in green. Not sure which one. Ah, oh, so I can sit on different cars or what? 
Uh, Launcher doesn't look good in that color. I still end up just going to look good in that color. Okay, so what? I bought it. Now I go to Liberator, create design, paint it, body. Where's the color I purchased? Or do I have to choose the special colors? Here we go. Yeah, that looks good. All of it. Paint all. Okay. Why is it? No stickers, nothing like that. No decals. Uh... I don't want to paint them, but it would be good to have them a bit bigger, uh, maybe, I don't know. Paint, decals, race options, okay, save it. Yes, just so many questions, so many click, so much, so much clicking. Uh, race items. I want that others caliper colors. Let's just pick up something which will which will work well with that green color. That looks good. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, okay, okay, that's it. I have to save the style. I will do it just in case. I hate myself for misclicking. Here we go. That's my style. <laughs> Okay, so we had a little taste of uh, GT car customization in GT7. Fine. Uh, I don't want to change anything else. I just want to go to the racetrack and race. So, world circuits. And I will start with... So, what's the gift card here? That's the... That's that C8, right? That's the four. And that's the slowest one, the meter or whatever it's called. So I want to get to that fast one as soon as possible because maybe I'll lose it on the other racetracks. <coughs> I don't really want to drive the BMW too much. Not a big fan of the Bavarian manufacturer. So that model definitely looks good. So that car... Oh, let's listen to Maraglino. Hello, my name is Salvatore Maraglino and I'll be driving a metallic yellow in 3 I'm from Italy. Good. I like BMW for the way it combines elegance and sportiness. It's also the car I started driving when I turned 18. Good for you. First of all, settings, assistance. So, manual gearbox, traction control, keep it off, ABS, I'm thinking weak for that car. That definitely has ABS. Okay. Um, anything else I want to change? I think that car has puddles rather than using a stick. So let's start and let's see. And let's drive manual. I 
have to say that really surprised me. I would thought that that BMW, or maybe 07, 2007 is too early for puddles. I don't know. Okay, that was <laughs> quick catch. That could, th that could have finished really, really bad. Hitting the wall, actually. That Renault Clio V6 is supposed to be a really crazy car. I was close. So I think that's the golden. BMW, the guy was talking about before the race. Fastnet corner, I really thought it's a third gear corner, but it was a second gear corner. I need to make a quick change to my load, so it's too hard for ABS. I'm not getting the braking power I should be getting. Sorry mate. That's Mercedes, right? AMG C class, I'm guessing. So that Mercedes is definitely better sounding car out of this two. That V8, uh, AMG V8. I think AMG is the only European manufacturer who can match the sound of American V8s. That BMW does not sound impressive, uh, either in the game or in life. Uh, it's not bad though, just not impressive.
Man, I stopped braking. I shouldn't be doing that on the last lap. I mean, not braking, but gearing. Oh, it's a big mischief there from me. Oh, oh. <laughs> I think he repaid me for uh, me kind of doing a dive bomb on him. And the hit I got from back really destabilized my car. I had to, I had to fight for uh, regaining the control. And here we go, finish line, P1. Sounds much better from the outside than from the inside. Mm, I still would prefer the C30, uh, C63 AMG. Okay, what is next? Uh, oh, so we got that Alfa Romeo. The question is... Does that Alfa Romeo require any upgrades to be 600 PP ready? Let's find out. So, Sardinia, <clears throat> third place or higher in that uh, 600 Clubman Cup, change car, 558, it's close there, mm, it's pretty close there. I want to tune it a little bit. And I think I'm going to do it, because I really, really want to drive that. Alfa Romeo. Should be much needed. Uh, let's start with tires, the same as the BMW has. And that's already 582. Um, brakes. Racing parts, they lower it again. I don't know why, but yeah, that's what it is. What it is. Um, actually, what does it say about them? Can I find some information about them? No. Brakes parts are made for material special design for racing. Once you've boosted the power of your engine, you'll need to ensure you have the right race to stop your car. This parts offer special power strong to racing. Okay. Not much there, but let's reduce the weight. And we're at 608, and we're there, we are there. We can use that car now, which is great. So the principle stays the same. No traction control, but ABS, it's a new enough car. Now I'm not sure if this car has puddles or a manual H-stick. No one to talk to here this time, so let's just check the settings quickly. So we have manual, we have weak ABS, and we have traction control at zero. The rest is off. And let's see what we'll be driving puddles or. We're driving puddles.
that Alfa sounds really good. It's quite loud actually. I'm really happy with that car. Is it Contage? It is, 25th anniversary. One, one of my favorite Lamborghinis, if not the favorite. Ah, I wasn't sure if I will be fast enough to catch that gap there. man what have you done couldn't go anymore to the left and there was enough space for me and then he moved to the, to the left to try and close me or I don't know what he was trying to do a bit brutal on the second gear <laughs> have to be more careful with the accelerator This is again that AMG C63. And he's quite fast in straights. Breaking too early. Fast. I have a slipstream and I'm barely, barely catching up. Easier to drive the puddles rather than uh, rather than using a uh, clutch and uh, eight stick. This time I was driving too, I was braking too early.
Oh, wow. I thought I can go full throttle there. That was my mistake. I take it. Well, it was the win. So, anyway. I'm surprised they got a clear race bonus for that uh, for hitting that wall at the end. That cough, that coffee is now cold. Um, okay, so that's for C, and we have one more race left to do. Alfa Romeo's design, so beautiful. Such amazing cars. There's something about Italian cars when it comes to design. Either it's Lamborghini, Ferrari, Alfa Romeo. Well, maybe not Fiat. Uh, but even Maserati. All of these cars look amazing. Zonda. Okay, so Brands Hutch. Uh, oh, I missed one here. Or maybe that's the one I was talking about earlier. Anyway, so without further ado, <clears throat> let's move to the final race of that uh, menu book. Let's collect that last Alfa Romeo three laps on the Grand Prix version of the circuit. We have someone to talk to us. I'm going to be racing with AMG from now on. Great for you. They are the one company that has everything I want from manufacturer. Purposing, for example, that's what they have. Okay, back in the Alfa Romeo, first corner of a uh, branch touch. The game doesn't really give it the justice as the downhill and then an uphill are so, so steep in real life. I don't think it's well visible within the game. That elevation change is really big at branch touch. I saw people getting tired just walking around the truck. Just shows how society is not prepared. of the Alfa Romeo I'm driving. That's the ugly Z8 with bloody ugly spoiler. And that's the beautiful Contouch 25th anniversary model. Looks like that Mercedes just over to the BMW. That's under assumption that the BMW was in front. But seeing how much faster the Mercedes is, that that's the assumption that the BMW that BMW had to be in front because the Mercedes would be well in front now if it was starting from P1. A bit too fast in the left hander. Had to slow down mid corner to actually stay on the truck. Clean enough, let's try to catch up that AMG.
was a mistake from that Mercedes behind me. He oversteer. At the exit of that uh, left hander. Now staying behind, final lap, that just delivered the win. And move to another menu book. Final corner, the right hander to the finish line. A bit of oversteer on my side this time. Caught it. And here we are. P1. All three Alfa Romeo races done. As usual, around 3 seconds advantage over the AMG. It's definitely the fastest out of the AIs. Uh, there was a huge advantage over the BMW from him. I think it was like 6 seconds. And he only got to P1 on second lap. So we can assume that he's around 3 seconds quicker on the lap than BMW. So fair enough, that was the older BMW, right? The 07, not, uh, no, 03, not 07, I believe. So here we are, uh, Alfa Romeo menu book is now completed. Let's go to the cafe and let's listen to what they have to say. Here we go. Pretty beautiful. Well, maybe two beautiful Alfa Romeos and one lesser. <laughs> Congratulations, you've got all three cars. This completes your Alfa Romeo collection. Once you've collected your rewards, I've got some stories to tell you about these cars. Another useless uh, roulette ticket. Luca. One of the oldest out of the manufactured cars brands in Italy is Alfa Romeo of Milan. Established in 1910, they've been around for well over a century. Its emblem is also something of a classic. Combining the cross of the city of Milan with the snake that is the symbol of the local house of Visconti, it's been their company badge from the very beginning. In 1911, Alfa Romeo took part in the first Grand Prix along with other manufacturers from various countries. I think they win. I think, sorry, I think they won. And between the 1920s and 1930s, Alfa Romeo racing cars won GP race after GP race. Yeah. Then they have produced many legendary sports cars that carry over the performance of the race car. And of course, Alfa Romeo still continues this tradition today. Let's listen to Chris as well, what he has to say about this model. This car is one of the most legendary creations in Alfa Romeo's storied history. Alfa Romeo used to specialize in the buildings of racing cars and high-class GT vehicles. What we have here is a modern take on the cars of that period. From its name to its styling, this car conjures up memories of Alfa Romeo as it was in the 30s and 40s. Although it employs an FR drive system, the transmission has been shifted to the rear. In a transaxle assembly that is meant to improve weight distribution. But it's not just the name and look that bounds the thrill. This car also drives like a dream. Well, I have to believe you because I didn't have a chance to drive that car. Use circuit experience to learn about a truck. Interesting. Claim victory in a one-lap attack race at Dragon Ter 
Trail Gardens. Now that you've got your hands on some powerful European cars from BMW and Alfa Romeo, I would like you to enter the European Championship. It features some trucks you are probably not all that familiar with, so you will need to do your homework. Head on over to World Circuits, then select Dragon Trail Gardens in Europe. The circuit experience feature to drive a lap of the truck and get a feel for its layout. Once you manage to record a bronze or better on your practice lap, this menu is complete. Using the circuit experience feature to learn all about a truck is the key to winning, winning there in future races. Okay, let's start. <clears throat> let's start, let's go to, to garage to check my cars. My new cars, car collection, so what do we have here? Where's the Italy? Here is Italy. So we have the 8C Competizione. Probably tested on the race trucks. Uh, we have uh, Mito 09. And we have 4C, which is also a nice car. Okay, and we have that useless red ticket. So let's get the lowest possible price to continue the tradition of getting only the worst prices possible. Here we go. Nothing has changed since the day one I started playing this game. Okay, so circuit experience, wall circuits. Europe. Wagon Trail in Croatia, Circuit Experience. Okay, so I have, uh, I can select the gardens layout. Do I have to use that car or can I choose the car? Okay, so it's sector after sector, sector and then it's uh, one lap attack. So let's do all of them, right? Settings. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep it as this. So that's Group Four car. So definitely puddles. Around rim. And I don't know what to expect. Definitely too fast. Ah, cut it too much. I want it to be too clever. <laughs> Let's try again. I don't see my time actually, but it was too slow. Well, it was bronze, but it's too slow. Still way too slow. Moving from uh, from road cars to racing cars is a uh, huge change.
That was still too slow. Oh wow, I'm really surprised. And that's finally gold. Okay, that is something I'm satisfied with. And let's move to the next one. Can I move the next one straight from here or do I have to exit? I have to exit. Sector 2. What's that? A straight, heavy braking, a uh, tight, almost herping left hander, and then finish. Okay, let's do it. I'm not sure where to start breaking. Okay, at least this time it was uh, straight to gold, so I don't have to spend here any more time. Really grateful for that, and let's move. Oh, I need to exit again. Uh, sector 3. And this is the SS. And then the, a few right handers and the finish, okay. I think that's gold, yeah it is, okay, so again, a good one, getting used to the car, um, they drive so differently than the road cars, uh, okay, so exit, and sector 4, and let's start, that's uh, one heavy braking, two left handers, they kinda connected, and acceleration, again, I have no idea what's the braking, maybe here, That could have been so much better. That's a very long straight and I need to be below 218 and I am. Okay, good. That was also easy. I don't want to watch the replay. And now is the whole racetrack, right? So, exit and a lap attack. What's the time to do? 1 minute 42.4 Okay, so let's start 1 minute 42.4 And here we go a bit too aggressive on that left curb. Probably lost time there. Every single time I accelerate, I think I will uh, spin just because of the fact that I'm putting so much power. But that car has so much grip. Oh, too fast, too fast. Again.
bit too wide here. I think that costed me quite a lot of time, but we'll see. Very aggressive there. That car has way too much uh, grip and acceleration. There's no chance that car would have so much grip in real life. I can press that accelerator and nothing happens. In terms of, I don't have to worry about spinning at all. I was barely, 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 barely. I made a few mistakes and I enjoy it. I'm going to retry it. It's gold. First step to master. Okay, fine. Messed up break into this corner. I went way too wide here. I have to start breaking a bit earlier. I don't remember the breaking point to that left hander, so that will be improvisation. But it is a nice improvement over the previous time, that is 1 minute 41. Good, I can accept that, that was much better lap, there is plenty to improve here, but who cares, right? Uh, great, so exit. Okay, all gold, that's my record. <laughs> 54,000 for one lap, that's not bad. All bronze, reward unlock, 200,000. Wow, half a million, that's nice. But I don't see those credits, where are they? I was still showing 900,000. 1,600,000, okay. Now it's more, more like that. Okay, I think uh, <clears throat> I will complete that menu book and that is going to be it for now. It was two and a half an hour already. Quite a long session, you've done it again, nice work. I bet you've got a good understanding of the Dragon Trail Gardens track now. Now just a heads up, I'm going to be asking you to enter championship next. But don't worry, I haven't forgotten about your reward. Go ahead and grab it. Unza. Okay, perfect. Uh, I'm done for now. I would like to thank you all for watching. And I will see you next time and have a great, great uh, Sunday afternoon, evening. See you next time.